In this video, we solve problem 7.1.36-T from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says that a, a programmer, excuse me, plans to develop a new software system. And planning for the operating system that he will use, he needs to estimate the percentage of computers that use a new operating system. How many computers must be surveyed in order to be 99% confident that his his estimate is an error by no more than 3%. In part A, we're asked to assume that nothing is known about the percentage of computers with new operating systems. This is actually not too difficult at all. We just have to identify the given information and then use the formula for calculating that sample size. Now this formula will be given to you. You're gonna have access to this sheet during your exam. This is the Triola formulas and tables and um, the formulas are right here. Now, if we have some estimate, p hat and q hat um, of success and failure, we're gonna use this formula for n. In the absence of information, we use this formula for n. We take um, the z sub alpha over two, it's squared, and then we multiply by 0.25 and divide by the error squared. This is really just an, a rearrangement of this formula. We had the error was equal to z sub alpha over two times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. Now in the absence of information, we would just assume that p hat equals one half and q hat equals one half. So the one half times the one half is that 0.25% um, that you saw in that formula there. So we've got 0.25 over n. Now, if I take this and I'm solving for n because I know what the E is, I know what the corresponding Z sub alpha over two should be if I'm looking for a 99% confidence interval, and I'm just trying to get n by itself. The way I would get n by itself is I would divide both sides by um, that uh, Z score or that, yeah, it is a Z score. It's a uh, critical value. And we'll square both sides to get rid of the square root. And then we'll have the error squared over that z score squared, because if you're squaring a fraction, you just square the numerator and the denominator. And now I want to get n in the numerator, so we'll flip these guys. So I'll have z sub alpha over 2 squared in the numerator over e squared equals n over 0 0.25. And then to get the n by itself, we multiply by 0.25. Now you don't have to do this algebra every time. You can just look at your formula that I wanted to show you at least once. That's where it comes from. We've got that z sub alpha over two squared, the 0.25 and the error squared. It's just a rearrangement of that error formula. Okay, so we want n. Um, in order to find n, we need z sub alpha over two and the error. Now, in the problem statement, it says, how many computers must be surveyed? So they're asking for n in order to be 99% confident. So that 99% confident, um, that's the confidence level, that tells us that alpha is equal to 1%. So it's the complement of that 99% or 0 0.01. And alpha over two is half of that. So half of 1%, which is 0 0.05. Now, if I'm drawing this on a standard normal distribution, typically the way we think of it is that when we're finding a confidence interval, we're looking for that 99% in the middle. And that 1% is gonna be split into the two tails. So I've got half a percent over here and half a percent over here. And Z sub alpha over two, which is in this case, Z, Z sub 0 0.005, that separates this bottom 99.5% from that top 0.5%. Or alternatively, we could say that the area to the left of this Z score has to be 0 
In order to find that z-score, I'll use my table. I can also use Excel, but I think the table is more convenient here. So I go over here and I look for 0 0.9950. And it's right in between this 0 0.9949 and 0 0.9951. That's z equals 2.5. And this is right in between 2.57 and 2.58. So it turns out to be 2.575, gives us that area of 0.995 to the left. You can also follow that asterisk and look at the um, footnote there. So this z-score turns out to be 2. Point, I looked at it and I forgot it immediately. <laughs> Let's see. 2.575. So that's what we're going to have right there. 0 0.25 times 2.575, and we're squaring that. And the error, we want that to be no more than 3%. So the error was given to us. It told us it was 3%, but we need that in decimal form as well. So you move that decimal over twice, and you have 0 0.03. So then we use a calculator for the arithmetic, 0.25 times that z-score squared divided by the error squared. And we get approximately 1841.84. We always round up because we need that error to be no more than this amount. It can be 3% or less. In order for it to be 3% or less, the sample size has to be this or more. That's 0.8, and so I would round up to um, 1,842. But even if that were 1841.3, uh, we always round up because we need the error to be um, no more than this value, which means that this n value has to be this value or something greater than that. So we're going to round up to the nearest integer, whether it would be appropriate to round up typically or not. So we need a sample size of 1,842. This is provided that we don't really know anything about the percentage of computers that have new operating systems. So that percentage or proportion of computers that have new operating systems can be assumed to be half of them. And then the other half would be those that don't. So there's our P hat and our Q hat. If we have no background information for this, that's, that's our assumption, and that's how we calculate n. So we get 1,842 there. Okay, then the next part of the question asks us to do the exact same thing, but then adjust it. It says, this time, assume that a recent survey suggests that about 92% of computers use a new operating system. So if we're thinking of success as a computer that uses a new operating system. Then the probability of success, our best estimate for that prob probability of success is that 92%, or in decimal form, that's 0 0.92. Well, if 92% use a new operating system, 8% don't, so that's 0 0.084 Q hat. So we would do um, pretty much the same thing with our error formula, but our error formula will have a P hat and a Q hat here. If we take that equation and we rearrange it solving for N, this is what we get. Now you actually don't have to have this memorized, it's on your sheet. You're gonna have P hat times Q hat times z sub alpha over two squared over the error squared. And that p hat q hat is standing in for that 0.25. And again, you don't have to memorize it. Um, it's right there on your sheet. It's just a rearrangement of that error formula. So we've got, let's see, p hat is 92%, 0 0.92, 
QHAT is 8%, 0.08. Um, Z sub alpha over two is still the same Z sub alpha over two from this one um, with a 99% confidence interval. We've got uh, Z equals 2.575, we're squaring that. And then we're dividing by that error squared. So you have 0.92 times 0 0.08 times, oops, not plus, times 2.575 and we square it. And then we divide by 0 0.03 squared. And we get about 542 this time, 542.2, but we're gonna round up to 542.3, or sorry, 543, I'm sorry. It's getting late, I'm tired. Um, because again, we need that error to be 3% or less than 3%. And if we rounded down to 542, the error would be slightly more than 3%, which is not what we want. So we always have to round up. So we'll round up there to that 543. So that's pretty nice. In the absence of information, we had to survey 1,842 computer users to find out if who was using a new operating system or um, alternatively, um, we had to look at 1,842 computers to determine how many were using a new operating system. But this says if we have this background information, we don't have to look for a sample size nearly as large. We only need 543 operating or computers, excuse me, for our survey if we know that this is true. And that's very nice. Um, I think the last part of the question is this. It says, does the additional survey information from part B have much effect on the required sample size? We say yes. Um, the um, new sample size is much smaller when we have that information. 